All right, guys. This is absolutely the crazy. I'm on vacation in Vietnam right now for the Christmas break, and I decided I want to I want to do a top 10 things you got to do while you're in Vietnam. And first on the list is drinking Vietnamese iced coffee. Let's go inside. I'm going to show you guys. So when you're in Vietnam, you definitely got to try the Vietnamese iced coffee, also known as the cafe soda. So there are different variations of it here. So you get the ice, traditional Vietnamese iced coffee, or you can get the egg coffee, you can get the coconut coffee. So now they're putting different ingredients in, so that you, it just caters to a lot of people. But if you want the authentic, get the Vietnamese iced coffee. So in the coffee apartments, we uh, we decided to go to 21 grams. So what do they call? Why do they call 21 grams, Johnny? You, you literally you made it up. So he literally said, "Oh, Dad, the reason why they said 21 grams is because they use 21 grams of coffee to make their their iced coffee." So I'm like, it sounded very, very uh, truth, right? Yeah? Like very, uh, very authentic. Yeah? Yeah, this guy, he just literally he makes up. Now he wants me to tell the whole world. So he made me iced coffee. Is either enjoyed cold or hot, but true cafe said that means. Cafe, so it's kind of like condensed milk. That is nice. They filter it through this little filter called a fin, and all the coffee green goes inside here, hot water goes inside here, and then it gets filtered, and then we wait for it to drip down here. All right, so it's finally finished dripping. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take the lid, we're gonna put it on this side, put the filter, the fin down, take the spoon that they usually supply you, and you're going to mix the coffee and the condensed milk. Vietnamese iced coffee is a little more on the uh, sweet side because of the condensed milk. Condensed milk is obviously really sweet, so you could adjust it accordingly. You can add more if you, if you find it a little too sweet. Mix all the condensed milk. Okay. All right. So once it's all done, you're gonna take the ice and you're gonna pour it all in. Vietnamese iced coffee is like super strong. Right? If you try an espresso shot at uh, Starbucks, nothing compared to it. It's like super, super strong. So if you like strong coffee, this is it for you. Woo! Oh, it's so, oh, it's so strong. But uh, it's a little on the sweet side on this one. Could have cut down a little bit on the uh, condensed milk. But luckily, I like it a little more sugary. Oh, so good. Really <laughs> nice coffee. That's another check on the list to do in Vietnam. So let's see if Johnny's right. Okay, uh, 21 grams. Yeah, this one. The name, right? Yeah. I'm gonna buy a ham, 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 just to clarify, it's just actually the name. It has nothing to do with the coffee. 21 grams of coffee grains in the coffee. <laughs> there you go. visiting Vietnam without eating a bowl of pho and going with going with the pho you gotta have the veggies a good bowl of pho always have the veggies just puts it like the icing on the top of the cake like these are um, these are uh, nagai and you gotta have the mint leaves just makes it that much better 
First things first, after you put the veggies in, you gotta try the broth. And with a, with a good bowl full, it's always the broth that makes it. it make it or break it is the broth. Oh, and it's fantastic. Let me show you. This is it. So, so that's it on the list. You gotta try the whole flow. Genuine from Vietnam. Oh my god, it's, it's so good, you guys. It's like a tie between pho and bung bui. For me, that's the two go-to dishes for me. For any any time I go to like a Vietnamese restaurant, whether it's in Canada or in the United States or anywhere abroad, the first two is bung bui and pho, hands down every time. We decided to stop into the famous post office in Saigon, Nha Bu Dinh. Because of the technology and uh, the cell phones, and it's just so easy to send people pictures, there's kind of a lost tradition where you send a postcard from where you're at when you're abroad. And just when your loved ones receive it, it's a little more meaningful. And so that's, we decided to just write up a whole bunch of them and send it all to our loved ones. So when you get a chance to do that when you're abroad, I would recommend doing it. It's just it's something very special when they receive it. All right, guys, so it's nighttime in the city, and man, in Vietnam, the nightlife is just absolutely crazy, especially for me right now. I'm in Saigon, and Bouvian Street, also known as Backpackers or Walking Street, and it's bumping with all nightclubs and street food. And that's another one on the list you gotta try in Vietnam is the street food. The one we're particularly looking for is the bun mi. Bun mi is another one you gotta check off the list. You gotta try when you're in Vietnam. Let's go and check it out. So we finally found our infamous bun mi. And of course this is like street food. And this is the ultimate street food you guys. Like, oh. This one has fried egg and the name, which is a pork patty. And of course, all the veggies. You gotta have the veggies in there. And you know what makes it break a bun mi? Is the French baguette. If the French baguette is not crispy, just right from the first bite, it's done. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, it's no good. So, let's try the first bite. Whoa. This is really crunchy. Oh my, oh my, so good, you guys. So, put this on the list. Vietnamese bun mi. Sorry for my mouth, but <laughs> it's so full. So good, you guys. Thank you. So good. So next on the list is you gotta try the street food at least once when you're in Vietnam. The street food is just absolutely amazing. So plentiful in the taste. And uh, yeah, despite all the reviews, you might get sick, but you just gotta be smart on it. Just don't go just randomly, just jump into a place where it just kind of doesn't look. If it doesn't look right, it ain't right. So just be smart when you go and try street food. But when you see the place is just bumping and busy, you know the food's gonna be rotated and it will be pretty, uh, pretty good and it should be pretty safe.
Okay, so we're almost done our list of things to do in Vietnam. And this is one of the, probably one of the top on the list is you gotta try the Bông Bầu Hue, also known to most of us in the foreign countries is BBH or spicy noodle. They have a couple of variations from the north to the south, but the south comes with the thick noodles. That's how you know it's very authentic and it has the beef, pork, and your ja. And of course, there's other variations where it has the, it's like a cube, look like jelly, but it's like a, it's called pork blood, or some of them have duck blood. It's congealed, and of course, to enjoy this to the fullest, it comes with its own veggie plate. This veggie plate is totally different from pho, so don't uh, mistake in it. So it has like, I, honestly, I don't remember a lot of what these things are called, you guys, but it's totally different from pho. Okay, so don't mistake in it. So when you put it in, using the full one, it's not the same. You gotta use the one specifically for BBH itself. So let's, uh, let's dive in, let's have the first bite. And again, just like pho, you gotta try, you gotta try the broth. The broth is the thing that really makes it, either does it, make it or break it, is the broth, you guys. So you gotta try that first. Wow. Fantastic, fantastic. It's not overly spicy. Some places, like BBH is known for spice, but it has to have the right touch. Like if it's too spicy, you just can't taste anything. Wow, steaming hot, fantastic guys. Let's dig in, let's throw in all the veggies. I love mine with the uh, Asian, Asian coriander. Just fantastic, you guys. Oh my God, fantastic. The noodles is spot on, you guys, spot on. The broth is fantastic, eh, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> right? Way better than North America? Yeah, look at this. That's how you know it's good. Homemade too, right? Yup. You can't find this. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, the key thing is, I've never been in this place before. So the main thing you want to look for is like it's busy. Um, Honestly, it doesn't look like what we're used to in North America. In Asia, a lot of these restaurants are pretty run down and they're pretty dirty. And it's really not what like I'm normal or what I'm used to in North America. But usually they're, they're the best place to find the best bumbo way or food. They're the best. So in North America, what we call them is a hole in the wall. <laughs> I know it kind of sounds kind of weird, but the hole in the wall are usually the ones that are the best. Um, but the biggest, indication of like finding the right place is when all the locals are it's busy and all the locals are in it um, because if it's a place where it's kind of kind of quiet and nobody's there don't go to those places it's got to be busy if uh, Alexa you want to just pan around to, to show them those are the key indications that we're like this is this place is the way the one that you want to choose and it's pretty safe to eat because um, the locals know if it's dead they're no they're obviously the ones that kind of they're gonna avoid it so so that's uh my tip of the day just go to the places that are busy and uh try it out don't be afraid to try it out like don't be when you see it's kind of dirty and stuff don't be discouraged and not try it and you uh, you'll discover some good places as long as you uh, stick to the rules if it's busy try it out <laughs> all right we're gonna move to the next one let's go find out <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey. Uh, 
Yeah, for it. Yeah. <laughs> so at least on the last on the list, you guys got to grab a grab bike. Uh, if you're in Saigon or Vietnam itself, the grab bike is the best way to go. And it's so much fun to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're traveling solo or with just a couple of friends, the grab bike is probably the best way to get around. It's easy to navigate and uh, the cost is really, really cheap. From my hotel to the airport, it cost me $1, $1 Canadian. And it was, it was pretty fun. And you keep, you keep pretty cool because the wind is just all in your face and stuff. So it's a pretty good experience. So you gotta, you gotta experience the grab bike when you're in Vietnam. All right guys, so next on the list of things to do in Vietnam is go shop at one of the local markets that sell all this fake stuff. And there's a lot of things that you can do and whatever your heart is content, you will find at this market. So let's go in, let's go find out what we can find. All right, so right when you walk in the door, you can see all of the nice Rolexes. You can find any Rolex you want here. <laughs> How much do they want? So that's pretty much it for this week's vlog. So we didn't we didn't get any watches or fake shoes or fake wallets or anything, but we walked away with a whole bunch of t-shirts that uh, we got a pre oh, and a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> the main rule of thumb is when you go to this place, you gotta go scope it out, check it out first. So a, a third a third of, of the price of what they ask for is usually the uh, rule of thumb, and you will pretty much be able to get a deal. Some of them will get mad, like you see in the the previous uh, t-shirt sale that we bought. Uh, some of them will get really happy, like the sunglasses, but some of them, will, like the shoes that Johnny tried to buy, they got really upset. Rule of thumb is, go a third of the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. We'll see you guys in the next weeks. See ya. What I would do for you.